to the VIP. Yeah, the IP, the VIP. Don't wait, cause the night's on me. It's on me, baby, all on me. Yeah. Sexy models, champagne bottles. Yeah, the IP, the VIP. Got two models, three more bottles. Auto and a model, got a bottle on the one side. B. Taylor, hey, yeah, the IP, V, V, I, P, it's on me, baby, it's all on me, What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Xander Effect. I'm your host, Xander Dames. Got a few things to chat with you guys on this beautiful Friday afternoon, including in entertainment news, the search and rescue for Naya Rivera has now turned into search and recover. Unfortunately, the actress, uh, you know, there's new footage that shows that she got on a pontoon boat with her young child. Her young child uh, was questioned by authorities as to what happened with his mother and he basically said that she dove in and never resurfaced. So we'll talk a little bit about that. In sports, it looks like uh, it looks like Julian Edelman has invited Deshaun uh, Deshaun Jackson to the Holocaust Museum. After, of course, we've heard uh, news that Deshaun Jackson said some anti-Semitic or posted some anti-Semitic uh, things on his social media. We'll talk a little bit about that in video game news. IGN has announced that they will showcase uh, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con. We'll talk a little bit about that. Also. In entertainment news, I had the opportunity to chat with up and coming hip hop artist Emmanuel Brown as he chats with me about his 15 year long journey in the music industry. I will also showcase his latest single, That's That. But first, here is the Xander Effect premiere of Dirty Machines, Bad Mama Sita, right here on the Xander Effect. This is Zay. How y'all doing? This is Eli. We are Dose, and you're on the Xander Effect. Baby, look at me. 
looking crazy Can we get a little crazy? Girl, like my mind's so crazy And I don't wanna see it, baby Got all the girls out here hating Me and my boys are here waiting You know your body ain't playing You know your body ain't playing When I pull up Don't say a word Captivate me with your body Hypnotize me with your the Xander effect in entertainment news Naya Rivera has still not her body has still not been recovered yet um, after search and rescue went from search and rescue to search and recover unfortunately it seems that authorities believe that Naya Rivera uh, has in fact passed away and uh, right now they're still searching for her body they cannot find it Ventura County uh, Sheriff however uh, released uh, security camera footage uh, late yesterday afternoon, basically showing Naya pulling up in her G wagon with her son, and uh, you know they they headed over to uh, go ahead and rent a pontoon boat, and they headed into the lake. Uh, there are more than 80 people currently involved in the search, which basically they're utilizing helicopters, boats, ATV vehicles, and ground personnel to try to locate Naya. Uh, this is just a, an incredibly sad uh, time right now in the entertainment industry. Uh, this young, this beautiful young woman uh, seemed to have personal problems. Nobody really understands what happened. I mean, personally, I, I feel terrible for her son having to have witnessed his own mother uh, more than possibly take her own life. I mean, there's still, there's still no, no, uh, no real. Uh, uh, bottom line as to what happened exactly um, whether she voluntarily just you know dove into the lake or maybe you know maybe she fell asleep something who knows I, right now they're still not sure as to what exactly happened they're basically just basing everything off of what her son had said because authorities questioned her son asking what exactly happened and he just uh, basically all he said was that his mother just dove into the lake and 
not much more than that so far. So really, there's no there's no understanding as to what exactly happened, um, and it's a very unfortunate situation, uh, you know, especially for that little boy. You know, that's going to be something that's going to be tr that's traumatizing for any child. Period. But having to see his own mother do something like that, that's going to follow that kid around for the rest of his life. Very unfortunate. I mean, I'm hoping that uh, you know he. I'm hoping that people are around him to pretty much, you know, take care of him under, you know, I mean, hopefully, hopefully uh, he'll get some help because this is something psychological that's going to follow him for the rest of his life. So, you know, definitely a very traumatizing moment. My condolences go to the Rivera family during this time. In other entertainment news, as I talked uh, in one of my episodes, I talked about how Brian Austin Green got very cuddly with Courtney Stodden in uh, in a hot tub and which she posted on social media well apparently that that romance was uh, very shortly lived actually if you could even call it a romance really uh, apparently it seems that according to Stodden Brian Austin Green is a womanizer and uh, you know after she posted that video she says that she was approached by several women uh, that basically were kind of, you know, telling her that, hey, I'm dating him too, you know? So uh, Stodden was very upset about that. Uh, but, you know, basically she also said that Brian wanted her to, to quote, remain his little secret, which, uh, you know, wasn't, you know, which very was very apparent because when she posted the video of him and her, uh, you know, he said that it was, quote, very disappointing and this caused problems between Brian and another model uh, named Tina Louise and basically because Tina Louise and Brian Austin Green were seen with each other uh, you know they, but Brian also said that they were not dating either so I mean gee let, let's think about this here for a second you know uh, a seemingly good-looking guy like Brian Austin Green is single has boatloads of money has fame and was recently married to one of the hottest women in Hollywood, Megan Megan Fox. Um, yeah, you think that he's gonna be playing the field? Yes or no? I, I, I'm I'm just curious. Of course he's gonna be playing the field. That's a rhetorical question. Duh. You know, guy like that obviously he's gonna be playing the field, and Courtney Stodden shouldn't be surprised. I mean, it's you know, I, personally, I don't think it's womanizing. I think he's just dating. You know, I mean, he just got out of, you know, of a marriage. And, and you know, he obviously he's going to be dating around. It's not like he's going to be womanized. Now, now, if he went ahead and said, obviously, told Courtney Stodden that, that he wanted her to be his little secret thing, yeah, that's, that's a little screwed up to do. I'm not going to lie. That's a little messed up to do. But at the same time, come on, Stodden, wake up. The guy is obviously going to be, you know, is going to be dating around. He's going to be like dating women. I mean, he's been married for so long. It's not like he's going to he's ready to settle down yet. He was uh, seemingly heartbroken that his marriage ended with Megan Fox. And of course, Megan is now dating MGK, according to, you know, different uh, sources. So he's going to want to go ahead and play the field. I mean, it's your, you know, it's your problem whether or not you get into something like that, knowing that. This person's not ready for a commitment yet. And not only that, hello, think about it. He obviously is not ready for a commitment. He just, again, he just got out of a divorce. He's not going to want to commit to somebody that quickly. I mean, Megan did, but that's Megan. You know, I mean, maybe she just moves on like that a lot quicker. Who knows? But he's not ready for that. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, she's moving on according to what, according to what she says. Um... She's moving on from Brian, and, you know, she's she's doing her own thing. Uh, she's promoting her new single, Side Effects, which is set to be released July 23rd. And, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You move forward. In other entertainment news, Eminem says F you to Drew Brees in his new track. Uh, Eminem went ahead and, you know, uh, released a brand new track today, and in it, he has a couple of choice words for Drew Brees. I mean, the the verse pretty much goes into saying, quote, I had hoop dreams, now I shoot threes. Got a little green, but I don't do weed. Perp Norlean, that's Tunichi. Uh, that's New Orleans F. Drew Brees. So, 
this obviously Eminem has always been very vocal about his political stance. You know, he's uh, he's been against Trump since day one. Um, obviously, he's against racism. He's against what they're what they're doing to you know our black brothers and sisters. You know, he's against all that, and. He's, he's targeting Drew Brees because of comments that Drew Brees made in an interview, basically when he said that, quote, I will never agree with anybody disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. And this is basically about uh, how he's criticizing players taking a knee during the national anthem, and, you know, including Colin Kaepernick. He later on went ahead and apologized for his words. But, I mean, you know, that's still, the words, it's one of those things where the bell cannot be unrung. You've already rung that bell, the bell's already been done. So, I mean, now people are a little bit upset. They're still upset with Drew Brees, obviously. <laughs> Eminem is very upset with Drew Brees. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Drew's just going to have to go ahead and take that kind of flack from people because, you know, he at the time, he didn't understand the whole reasoning for taking a knee during the National Anthem. But later on, he does. Who knows if he actually meant that apology or if his publicist basically told him, dude, you got to apologize because you're getting a lot of negative press from this and that's not good for your career. So that, that could be the reason why he apologized. Who knows? Who knows? But the point is that Eminem decided to uh, to really go in on it with, you know, towards Drew Brees. But Drew Brees wasn't the only one in Eminem's crosshairs. He basically took a shot at a lot of politicians at how they handled the COVID-19 pandemic by saying, quote, bunch of halfwits up in office, half of us walking around like a zombie apocalypse. Other half are just pissed off and don't want to wear a mask and they're just scoffing. And that's how you end it catching that S off them. I just used the same basket as you shopping. Now I'm a, now I'm in an effing casket from you coughing. So <laughs> Eminem definitely went off on everything that's going on right now with the pandemic. And props to him because I've been saying this for the longest time. So many artists out there right now that are doing music are kind of they're, I mean, maybe they're doing this because there's already enough news about the current pandemic that's going on. But nobody's really, I mean, aside from doing, you know, little telethon specials and stuff like that, no one's really come out with a single regarding the current pandemic. So, I mean, from what I, for, as far as I know, Eminem's the first one to come up with a single that is based, you know, uh, in large part of the pandemic. So props to him on that. Go check it out. It's streaming right now on all major platforms, so go check that out. In other entertainment news, I had the opportunity to interview up-and-coming hip-hop and R&B artist Emmanuel Brown, and he chats with me about his 15-year-long journey through the musical entertainment industry. But first, here is his brand-new single, That's That, right here on The Sander Effect. One, two, three, let's go! Trying to keep it on the down low, you don't know. So 
gonna fly though. This is summer on lounge mode. Getting crazy on the time zone. My mind gone from drinking all of this liquor. With the fam, good times we deliver. Hope I remember all the vibes in these rays. Watch the tide, get it right, living life. As we cruise on the night, feeling the height. Drinking vodka, maybe mixed with the Sprite. This summer life, we live it, and that's a fact. Good times and memories is where we at. No matter the place, we go with that. Feeling good, my nigga, and that's that. I've been working all day, grinding all night. All I wanna do is just smoke and vibe. Feels alright, sounds good to me. Living life, baby, I feel so free. Ride with me, chill, relax, have a good time, keep living. That's that. We living, that's that. That's that by uh, hip hop artist and R&B artist Emmanuel Brown. And with me is the man himself on the Xander Effect. Thanks for uh, being on here, Emmanuel. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. I appreciate you having me. Appreciate your time. Um, life is good, you know, so no complaints. Nice, nice, man. And so I know that you're, uh, you're hailing from Seattle, Washington. How, how is it going up there with you guys? I mean, I know it's pretty crazy up there. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of media attention up here with, you know, um, the chop, the Chaz zones and everything that's going on with, uh, you know, the the racial inequality. And, um, you know, it's it's crazy, but I would say it's like nowhere else, you know, um, where people are just trying to fight for justice, you know, and, um, you know, me not even being from here, but just like living here for the past couple of years. I know it's something that, you know, people want to see change with. Yeah, because you're originally from uh, from Newport News, Virginia, right? Correct, I am. Wow, man, that's definitely a, a that's definitely a very interesting move going from Virginia to Seattle, Washington. Must be a little bit of a culture shock. It was a humongous culture shock, honestly. Um, you know, life is just so different from living on the East Coast to living on the West Coast, and I never honestly thought I would end up on the West Coast, but I sort of love it. I don't think I'll ever go back to the East Coast to live. Nice. Well, let's go ahead and go back a little bit as to how you got started in this industry. I mean, did you always know that you were going to be, uh, you know, a musical artist? No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> uh, when I first, like, thought about what I wanted to do in my life, I wanted to go to the NFL. That was oh, like wow. one of my dreams was to go to the NFL. And then, um, I mean, I went to a terrible high school. Like, our sports were terrible. Like, uh, like we won like two games my entire high school career. So that just wasn't going to happen. And then, um, you know, it just wasn't like a lot of good things coming out of my area. So I just, I sort of wanted to like be a lawyer at one point or whatever, you know, and then uh, I found music when I was younger and I, I never really took it as serious and thought it could be a career. But then I realized like, it's just nothing else I wanted to do. So that's how I came to it. I mean, did you did you have family members that were over that were musically inclined? I mean, was that somewhere along in your bloodline? I mean, as I came to learn later, yes. But, you know, when I first started, I had no idea. Like my dad used to sing. He gave it up. Um, I want to say I have some cousins who did some music back in the day. I got cousins, I got family now who does music right now. But um, I'm the one that has gotten the furthest i guess and is taking it more seriously than anybody else and you're you're considered an independent artist as well i mean is that by choice or is that because you're still like trying to work on on getting uh more mainstream you know that's a great question it's definitely by choice and because you know i want to continually grow my business and my brand which i think is more important than anything you know is like when you have the awareness around you, then the leverage will come. And for me, you know, I'm not really worried about labels or anything like that. I, I can handle everything on my own within my team and then move, you know, forward past that. And, and what's, what's interesting is that you're living in a state where a lot of independent artists actually, you know, have, have shined from there, from Seattle. Right. Uh, you know, they've all like, it's Seattle is pretty much uh in a sense, it's 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 a very independent music mecca. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, you know, it, it's interesting that you say that and bring that up. And, and you know, I think that's awesome. Um, there's a lot of history here in music, whether it be hip hop, rock, you know, um, soul, grunge scene, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. You know, with Pink Floyd, Nirvana, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's a lot that goes into it here. And um, Seattle is still looked at as like, not a Mecca to some people for music, which is interesting to me. And, and, and that's not, and that's, you know, and that's kind of sad to hear that because I mean, it, it is actually, it is, but for independent artists. Um, but the thing is that independent artists, from what I understand, they, they start, a lot of them start in Seattle and then they just, they just blow up right after that. And uh, that's, that's become kind of, uh, that's what Seattle is known for, really. Um, mm. You know, it, it kind of creates, you know, incredibly talented artists from there and so it seems like you're you're on the right path when it comes to that now when you mention about your brand what what brand are you trying to uh are you trying to um uh give to the world right now i mean more than anything i just think it's important just to be yourself embrace your failures embrace where you've been where you came from you know and um be comfortable in your own skin like you know in anything you see me doing in a video, you know, a podcast interview like this, you know, um, my music, it's all about truth, you know, rawness. And like the way I dress is like, I dress like an average dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I wear a hoodie sweats, you know, like my wife hates it, you know what I mean? But like, that's who I am. And, you know, I, I think that's important is just for people to be comfortable in their own skin, which is, in, it's not something that we talk about a lot, you know, in life, you know, everybody wants to not everybody, but most people want to mimic something else instead of just, you know, being true to themselves. No, and that's and that's you know that's actually the best way to look at. It. I mean, trust me when I say I'm I'm kind of the same way. I am not a fancy dresser or anything like that. I dress pretty much like a California dude. Well, I mean, I was I was born and raised here, so yeah, I'm gonna be dressing sandals all the time. You know, I'm I'm gonna be dressing like you know, I'm going to the beach all the time. I'm always in shorts, even in the winter time, because it never really gets cold here anyway. So, you know, I mean, I'm always, I, I get what you're saying, you know, just a very simple life. And uh, that's, that's actually that I love, I love living that life because that's, that's the way it should be really. I mean, you know, that's just the way I feel. And, you know, I'm glad to hear that you're, that you embrace that lifestyle as well. Now, as far as uh, your music style, what made you get into uh, hip hop and R&B in that specific, in, in, the, in those two specific genres? Right. I mean, that's a great question. Um, And I think, wow, I think you're sort of like the first person who sort of asked the question that way in an interview. Um, Honestly, I got into music on accident, as I tell people all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, I never thought I would end up rapping. But, you know, um, I just so happened in like middle school to be around people who rapped a lot. They asked me if I could. I said no. I tried. And then I never stopped. Um, realistically what it was was just like the the infatuation with how people can put words together that can literally change the way you look at life that is just the most amazing thing to me when i think about it you know because how can you know this one person man woman whatever can hold so much weight within the words they're saying that connect and resonate with you that can change your whole demeanor you know which is which is rare so that's how like I became fascinated with I remember the first song I ever heard was by Dr. Dre Mm -hmm. um hip-hop song that is I think it was called Stop the World or something like that it was off one of his I think it was off like the chronic or something like that Mm -hmm. but um that's how I got introduced to hip-hop I became a big fan of Tupac Snoop Dogg a lot of West Coast stuff even though I'm from the East Coast nice um and then my favorite R&B group of all time is TLC you know, nice. produced to their music, it just made me be like, wow, like, this is super smooth, super like, you know, dope. And I think uh, I feel like some of the best music is the music that pulls at a heartstring, that pulls at an emotion. Very true. Any type of way. And that's what I always try to portray throughout my music is like, for you to, to feel what I'm saying to you. And if you don't, then I feel like I failed. You know, and we go back to the drawing board and try again. 
No, and that's you know what that's a, that's a really good way to look at it. And I, I like your I like your taste. I like your taste. TLC. Um, I really loved their music. I I had kind of a little bit of a crush on Lisa. May she rest yeah. in peace. You know, I mean, I I was actually very sad when I when she passed. Right. Um, because I was like I was like you know I I had a thing for her. I had a thing. It's weird. I had a thing for all the ones that are gone now, like Aaliyah. Like I had the biggest crush on Aaliyah like I was like oh my god whenever I saw her I was like hi um <laughs> so it, it was one of those things where they it, it, it it's you know the way they they pretty much they gave their personalities to their music right. and that's what I really appreciated a lot about a lot of these artists a lot of these artists they they portrayed their personalities in their music mm-hmm. and that is what I think what I believe it makes them such a huge success you know, not what uh, it's a cookie cutter, not what um, is trendy or a gimmick or anything like that, but who they really are is what people want to hear. And I'm assuming that that's pretty much what you're what you're trying to do as well in your music, too. Exactly. You know, it's just it's just real. You know, and when I say raw, I just mean like in I mean, in the truest form, I'm just telling you my truth. You know, and one thing I think a lot of fans, people, even some artists forget sometimes is like, you know, throughout the music, I may be talking about whatever, you know, like bad upbringings, whatever, but that was who I was then. That's not who I am now. And I'm sharing it with you just so you know that I can, I can arise above this just like you can, you know, because there's a lot of people who are in the positions right now that we were in, you know, five years ago and they need to hear that, you know, to help them, get through it no it's it's and the thing that you're pretty much describing is you know the way you're evolving exactly. one, you know and one like a few years ago we're not we're none of us are the same way that we were five years ago hell none of us are the same way we were a year ago exactly. you know i mean we just consistently keep on evolving into different uh different types of people and that's that's always good that you keep on uh you know describing your life through music and you've been you've been at this for over 15 years. I mean, do you ever get discouraged at all? Like, I mean, do you ever think, wow, I've been doing this for a long time and, you know, this is this, you know, time for a change? Or, I mean, how do you feel, you know, being in this industry now for over 15 years? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, in the be, you know, in the beginning or middle stages, I definitely got discouraged because I used to think that, like, it was just all about the music. Like, if the music was good then everything else will fall into place. And I realized that that's not the case, you know? I mean, as as sad as that may be for some people, you know, that's just realistic. Like, you know, you have to do more than just making great music because you can make great music, but it's how you get it to the people to resonate with the good music. So, um, you know, there's been times I, I've been like, you know what, I've quit. Like, I remember I was working on my first album called the news that came out in 2018 mm-hmm. and like i was literally almost done with it and i just like one day i was just sitting in my driveway and i was like yeah i'm done with this i'm done with music after investing thousands of dollars and i had to like re think to myself like you know no nah, i can't just give this up like you know i put a lot of work into this and time and, and effort and you know i believe in myself and i just think you know one thing i always refrain or think back to now is just like why like i wouldn't be happy if i left if i left it so i just need to keep doing what i need to do and that's what that's what inspires you to keep going is just the fact of the matter that you know you just you just you push yourself you keep pushing yourself to yeah. continue going forward exactly exactly and i mean you know whether if i get you know 10,000 streams or you know five streams like it doesn't matter because it's impacting someone on on some type of level whether it's big or small and you know just because it's small to some people it can be big to others exactly no i completely agree with that and and not only do you make not only do you like you know are you an artist but you're also a producer as well i I mean you're producing uh you're producing for other people i mean how's that experience going for you yeah i mean i don't really do too much production anymore um as as much as i used to but um you know it's definitely i do i i do in the the typical 
realm of what production used to be. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. with the composition and building around the music, that's something I do, you know, do a lot more of. I don't really get behind the boards as much anymore. But um I do enjoy it because it gives me the ability to to, you know, again, evoke an emotion and take you to a different place than you were before. And do you feel like sometimes whenever uh, you write something, you look at it, you're like, you know what, I don't want to go ahead and do this. I want someone else to, to you know, uh, sing the song or to rap this, you know, this this verse or something like that. I mean, do you feel that way sometimes whenever you write something? Uh, I mean, I would just say for like hooks. I mean, I'm very, very adamant in like writing my own music. You know, like now if there's, like you were saying, if it's a hook and I'm like, yeah, I think this person would sound better doing this, you know, I'll reach out to them and be like, hey, how do you feel about doing this? You know what I mean? And then we do what we got to do to make sure that happens to get that emotion across, you know, that I want to give to the listener. That's good, though, that you say that because a lot of artists, they, you know, they're very, for lack of a better word, they're very selfish and they want to do everything themselves and it doesn't sound good. So that's good that you at least are more open, you know, and you're, uh, you're a realist. You're like, you know what? This should sound better coming from someone else that, rather than myself. So that's, that's actually a really good thing. That's, that's a very rare quality when it comes to, like, uh, to many artists. So talk to me a little bit about That's That. That's your newest single that's out right now. Uh, I mean, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to write this, this particular song. Yeah, I mean, usually to most people, I do a lot of conscious music, but I was just, uh, I was just in a space when I heard the beat and I was just like, man, it just feels like a summertime vibe, you know, like I just get off work and I just want to just kick it with my homies and just like drink, smoke, whatever, you know, so I was like, let me write from that perspective of just somebody who just wants to just chill out and not think about life and just enjoy time with their friends, you know, Um, so that's where that inspiration came from was just like, you know, let's not talk about nothing else except having a good time with, you know, the people we love. And, you know, I don't think there's a lot of music like that right now. And the title, that's that. I mean, how how did you come up with that title? <laughs> uh, honestly, that was sort of just like the last word in the hook. So ah. I was like, okay, I mean, I mean, that's that. Like, that's that. that. <laughs> it's like, it's that simple. So um, I think that's why it stuck for me. Nice. So, I mean, you know, you're looking at... Uh, pretty much you've been only doing uh, hip hop and R&B. Are you looking to maybe expand the genre horizon scene as there's so many people that are doing crossovers with country crossovers with Latin pop, I mean, and pop. I mean, are you looking to maybe cross over to different genres at all? I'm always open to it. You know, I just think it really comes down to like who the artist is. Number one, do we have a relationship, you know, and does it like make sense for both of us to do that? I'm always open. Okay. All right. Well, that's good, though. That's good that you're open for that. So as far as right now, I mean, obviously, we, you know that we're all in this damn quarantine uh, that's kind of driving all a little bit, like all of us a little bit, like completely batshit crazy right now. Um, but so, I mean, are you, are you, uh, you know, are you keeping yourself busy during this quarantine? Yeah, you know, it's crazy is like before the quarantine, I was always like out you know, um, in Seattle, you know, trying to get shows together, you know, uh, projects in the studio. And when it, everything happened, I, I realized like all the normal stuff I did stop. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the back end business stuff, like, you know, um, my actual LLC and stuff like that, like was something I needed to get more in order than I did before. So I'm thankful. I mean, I'm not thankful that COVID hit. Let me just say that. Number Honestly, one. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, I've learned so much more about myself and how much more work needs to be done. And I've gotten done, you know, during this time, like I record at home now and I've been more productive that way than I was when I used to go to the studio that my business partner owns, you know, and um, it's been great for me, you know, just to get a lot of things in order that weren't that way before. So have you? So I'm assuming then that you have more than just this single that's going to be coming out. You probably have a few more that are going to be coming out very soon, seeing as you've had time to like do a lot of uh, projects from home. Yeah, actually, I have a new single coming out next Tuesday. Oh um, yeah, uh, it's called Fuego. So that's coming out, and then I have a project coming out in September that's ready to go, and then uh, I'm going to drop some more music next year as well. You know, so they'll have to wait on the details for that, but. Um, 
yeah, I'm excited for everything that's coming. Nice. And of course, I'm also wondering during quarantine, do you ever do one of those like Facebook concerts or anything like that? I mean, because a lot of people are, have been doing that, too. Right. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. I really thought about doing it, but I just don't I don't think me personally, I would be doing my fan base uh, a good service by doing that because I just feel like it's just not the best thing for me to do. So I stayed away from it. I just looked at more of let me get more personal with my fan base than I have been before. Okay. Well, that's fair. That's a fair, that's a fair assessment. You know, I mean, you, you know, your fan base better than anybody. So, I mean, if you, if you believe that, then it has to be true then. So, I mean, you gotta, you gotta do whatever is best for your fan base. So that's a good thing that you're looking at for them in that aspect. So, I mean, as you know, as far as concerts go, obviously the, the, can't be any concerts right now but i mean are do you have any concerts planned out uh for once this you know situation gets better and we're able to like actually be able to like talk to human beings again i do have some things planned i mean they're not like cemented yet you know but uh yeah i'm definitely looking at next year like i know nothing's happening this year so next year is definitely what i'm looking for and and understanding that okay next year is where you know, I want to travel more, you know, I have never toured. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe, you know, I do a quick couple city West Coast tour next year, you know, in some places I know I can get into, you know, so those are some things I've been looking at and trying to get get together and get ready. Nice, nice. But I mean, you performed for for people before, right? Oh, of course. Yes, how, yes, yes. How does that how does that usually make you feel like how do you how do you usually feel whenever you're in front of an audience? I feel amazing. You know, I definitely one thing I didn't know before was like, it's a massive difference be being behind the mic and in front of people, right? And uh, it's definitely something I enjoy. And I love taking what I can put on the record and doing it live, but adding a little more flair or spice to it. You know, I'm making it different and interactive. I'm all about interactive shows. Nice, nice. So uh, as far as uh, collaborations go, will you be doing any collaborations with any other artists, uh, in, you know, in your upcoming music? Yeah, I definitely have some uh, collaborations with um, some good friends of mine, uh, Sari Savvy, a good friend of mine's King Dow, another friend of mine, his name's Fresh C. There's some, uh, you know, more major artists I'm, I'm reaching out to to get some features. So we'll see if that happens, you know, if it does cool, if it doesn't cool, you know, you know how this business works. So, um, but yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, you know, I mean, I got to ask this question because I ask all my guests this every single time. How can people stalk you on social media? <laughs> yeah. Music by E Brown. That's M U S I C B Y E B R O W N. Um, you know, I go by Emmanuel Brown. Everybody calls me E Brown for short because it just rolls off the tongue better. So, uh, yeah, that's how you find me. Website is musicbyebrown.com as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Emmanuel Brown, thank you so much for being on the Xander Effect. I look forward to much more of your music. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, you'll, you'll allow me to play your newest single uh, when it comes out next week. And yeah. uh, I'll be able to play it on the Xander Effect. It'd be an, uh, be an honor to do that. Thank you again, man, for being on the show. And uh, stay safe out there. And, you know, hopefully we'll have you back on the show very, you know, very soon. Yeah, I would love that. I appreciate your time, you know, everything that you do. And uh, thank you. No worries, man. You take care of yourself. All right. Thank you so much, Emmanuel Brown, for being on the Xander Fact. Looking forward to have you back on the show very soon. In sports, Julian Edelman invited Deshaun Jackson to the Holocaust Museum in the wake of Deshaun's anti-Semitic social media posts. And uh, yeah, he, Deshaun Jackson's gotten a lot of uh, a lot of uh, flack for it. Obviously, he apologized for posting such uh, su such uh, such uh, quotes. Uh, one of uh, one of the quotes is actually from Hitler, and it was just mind blowing for so many people for, to see Deshaun Jackson post such things. And uh, you know, he's gotten a lot of criticism from many people in the NFL. Uh, but the thing is, the, the cool part about it is uh, about it is that Edelman 
took this opportunity to actually turn a negative into a positive. And he basically went on social media and he said, quote, I have seen Deshaun play in his career, making out, uh, make outstanding football plays. We've communicated over social media. I've got nothing but respect for his game. I know he said some ugly things, but I do see an opportunity to have a conversation. I am proud of my Jewish heritage. And for me, it's it is not just about religion. It's about community and culture as well. I am unusual because I didn't identify as Jewish until later in my life. Whenever I encountered hatred, it never really felt like it was aimed at me. It was only after I was a part of this community that I learned how destructive hate is. Anti-Semitism is one of the oldest forms of hatred. It's rooted in ignorance and fear. Uh, along with that, he, Edelman went ahead and told Jackson that basically, if you know, if he, if Jackson goes ahead and visits the Holocaust Museum, he's more than happy to take a trip uh, to the National Museum of African American History, so that way Edelman could learn about Jackson's culture as well. I mean. It's just, it's crazy because for Deshaun Jackson to, to be posting such things like that, especially right now during this very critical time where we all need to join together. I mean, especially, especially the Jewish and black community, they, those two cultures have so many similarities. You know, as much as the African-American culture were slaves, Jews were also slaves as well. So, it, it, you know, th that right there is an unfortunate uh, thing that they that both cultures have in common. And for Deshaun Jackson to be posting some of this, it, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, you know, and, and no kidding people were going to be upset about that because I did. What are you doing? Another another uh, another NFL player that decided to go ahead and uh, and and say a few words on social media was offensive lineman Mitchell Schwartz. And he went ahead and posted, quote, as a Jewish American in the NFL, I stand with my brothers of all races and creeds against any form of discrimination and hate. One of the things that makes our game so great is the diverse background of the guys in the locker room. Not just from a racial standpoint, but a religious one as well. Although in my personal experience, my teammates have always been supportive and interested in my faith, anti-Semitism is on the rise in this country. Tragedy after tragedy, the number of hate crimes against Jews has reached record levels in the past few years. My hope is we can use this moment to shed light on and bring awareness to the hate and oppression the Jewish community still faces while while standing strong with the Black Lives Matter movement. We can only have change if we denounce racism and bias in all its forms. Our platforms as athletes are a powerful tool, and with them comes immense responsibility. We can all do better. So, I mean, again, turning a negative into a positive. So far, it seems that uh, Deshaun Jackson has, you know, has basically agreed to, you know, joining Edelman. And he's, again, he's apologized for, for what he said and what he did. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully he has learned from this and, you know, can move forward in a much more positive direction. In other sports news, looks like, uh, it looks like, uh, Houston Texans J.J. Watts re will refuse to wear a mask uh, and he will opt out of the NFL season if the NFL requires to wear a mask. He basically said, quote, my second year in the league, I thought it'd be cool. I put a visor on my helmet. I was like, it looks so cool. I want to put a visor on. I had it on for about three periods of practice and I said, take this sucker off, I'm gonna die out here. So now you're gonna put something around my mouth? You can keep that. If that comes into play, I don't think you're gonna see me on the field. Well, here's, here's the thing, JJ. You need to wear a mask in order to protect yourself and others from this pandemic virus called COVID-19. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been around for a little bit now, for a few months, and it's kind of killed a few, like, thousands to millions of people that it's infected as well. Get over yourself, okay? You need to stop actually, you know, thinking that you're above everyone else. You need to wear a mask. You need to protect yourself and you need to protect others. That's mainly what it's for. So if you decide not to play, well, there's a door. Hope it doesn't hear, hit your ass on the way out because you know what? We don't need people like that 
trying to play a game just because they feel uncomfortable with wearing a mask. Get the hell over yourself, man. Come on. This is this 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 is the new normal, unfortunately, until we have a vaccine. You need to start getting with the program here, guy. I mean, you know, let's 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 face it here. You, we, we need to go ahead and make changes, and unfortunately, those changes require certain sacrifices to your face. I mean, you know, it is what it is. In other sports news, the UFC has announced that it has partnered with Venom, replacing Reebok in 2021. Now, here's the thing. Reebok has been with uh, with the UFC since 2014, and they agreed to a six-year, $70 million athletic wear deal. So it looks like that contract is pretty much up, and Venom is coming in. The UFC president, Dana White, went ahead and said, quote, we're pumped that Venom will be joining us as our new exclusive global outfitting and apparel partner. Venom is an iconic combat sports brand that understands the unique needs of MMA athletes. Frank Dupuy and his team at Venom have the technical knowledge and experience that will produce world-class UFC fight kits and apparel. We're looking forward to collaborating with them on this next evolution of UFC's outfitting program. Now, Reebok will continue to uh, be the official foot of the UFC until at least the end of 2021. But as far as everything else, looks like the new apparel is going to be Venom. So kudos to Venom for landing that huge deal with the UFC. Coming up next in video game news, IGN announces that they will be showcasing San Diego Comic-Con on their website. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first, here is Great Digs Pedigree, right here on the Xander Effect. I'm kicking on this beat, don't stand next to me. I look like happy feet, but on some ecstasy. I'm kicking on this shit like it's supposed to be. Peekaboo like Pikachu electricity. I'm kind of like a vampire, you can't picture me. You don't want these hands, you can't mix with me. You kind of like a fly, you a pester G. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. Yeah, that's my pedigree. That's my pedigree. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. Yeah, that's my pedigree. That's my pedigree. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. Yeah, that's my pedigree. That's my pedigree. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. That's my pedigree, that's my pedigree. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. You can't fuck with me, I'm on some better trees. I'm so fucking special, you gon' remember me. You gon' remember me. I'ma let it bang, it's a fucking thing. I'm a metaphor to Bruce, I'm almighty. You. I'm a fucking dog, so I bite back. If you hit me for a song, I might write back. All I want is money and a tight cat. They hired Michael Myers from the right trap. That's my pedigree, that's my pedigree. Great Dane in my blood, that's my pedigree. That's my pedigree, that's my pedigree. This is Akeda, and you're listening to The Xander Effect. You were so deceptive. Let me self destruct. If we change perspective. Walking through 
out trying to look for escape. Tell him you're fine, baby, I'm on the way. right here on the Xander Effect. In video game news, IGN has officially announced that they will be collaborating exclusively with San Diego Comic-Con to bring Comic-Con at home on IGN Live July 22nd through 26th. Uh, on IGN's website, they basically said, quote, with SDCC going all digital and totally free for 2020, we'll be bringing you a selection of live streamed panels throughout the show. Handpicked from the 350 plus options that Comic-Con is airing this year. On top of that, we'll be screening our own content, including exclusive interviews, expert analysis, and much more, covering the length and breadth of Comic-Con content. From film, TV, and comics to gaming, cosplays, and collectibles, we'll be releasing our full schedule next week, so make sure to check back with us for that. You'll be able to watch Comic-Con at home on IGN Live across IGN.com, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And we'll have some custom created programming for, for Snapchat, Instagram, Samsung TV, Plus, and more. I mean, that's that's actually incredible. And the, the, uh, uh, Terry Schwartz uh, from IGN also went ahead and said, quote, We know this world inside and out, so to have the chance to collaborate with San Diego Comic-Con to bring their programming to a huge online audience was such a natural fit. We're thrilled to continue to bring what we do best to the Comic-Con circuit, albeit under very diff different circumstances than previous years. I mean... This is going to be an amazing event for so many people to watch at home. Uh, you know, many people were 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 uh, disappointed. So many different conventions were canceled. You know, South by Southwest was the first convention, pretty much, to be uh, our, our uh, event, not convention, but event to be canceled this year. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, E3 was canceled. So many different, uh, so many different uh, conventions and events were canceled this year. Concerts, everything, because of the unfortunate COVID nineteen. Pandemic. I mean, I, I, I have to give kudos to a lot of these organizations for doing the best they can to bring.
bring these conventions to our homes because it, it's got to be difficult. I mean, especially since you can't go there and see everything live for yourself, can't buy any of the, the items that are there for sale, you know, through different vendors. I mean, this has got to be really difficult for all of them. So kudos for them to continuing to give us something to, you know, look forward to, something to watch on TV while we're sitting at home trying to stay safe and, uh, you know, continue to remain quarantined for, you know, for our own safety. So props to them for that. I look forward to actually watching San Diego Comic-Con uh, July 22nd through the 26th via IGN and all other platforms. That's the news. In case you haven't heard it, thank you so much for listening to the Xander Effect. Again, remember, we're still in a pandemic right now, so please continue to be safe. Please continue to wear your masks. They're for your protection and for the protection of others. You know, wear your masks if you go out, wear your goggles if you got them, wear your gloves if you got them for extra safety. And remember to like, you know, just, we're all in this world together. We're all in this together. So make sure that you have each other's backs always. And remember, music always, always heals all. We'll see you next time. Yo. <laughs> I be tell I tell. Yeah, you did. They ain't believe it though. <laughs> One life. Do brown. Same game, be telling. What up? So we kick it like it's kickball Power couple She dripping in that Dose Gabbana They want to touch her Everybody know that's do girl What you gonna do by Me and her take on the world Now that's the truth Hey everyone The Xander Effect is powered by 5050 Global Music Inc Sony Music The Orchard And BMG Bertelsmann Group In association with Art19 Media